Right guys, today's session, introduction to AC theory. So what we're going to look at during the session today is just how um, a sine wave is generated um, from the movement of a coil in the magnetic field, briefly. Something that if you've already done something like VTEC, you've probably gone through anyway the basic uh, principles of generation. Then we're going to look at the um, a range of properties of a sinusoidal waveform, what they mean, and um, how they can be calculated from various other bits and pieces. Overall, we're looking to develop what's called the equation of a sine wave, so the basic standard form of the equation of any sine wave, um, so that we can calculate instantaneous values of voltage through that cycle. Okay, and that will include being able to calculate when there's a phase shift involved. Okay, so um, onwards and upwards. So, first thing we look at, we can create a sinusoidal waveform if we turn a, a, a simple coil of wire inside a magnetic field. So if there's a field here from north to south <coughs> as we turn this coil of conductor like that says there, I'll just tidy that up that letter is omega, we're going to come back to that in a little bit but that's the angular velocity in radians <coughs> per second so throughout this class when you're doing calculations your angles are going to be in radians so please make sure that your calculator is set to radians. Okay. So as we turn this um, conductor in this field, we end up with the, <coughs> with the conductor at various points moving or across or cutting across the field. Like we were talking about a couple of weeks ago, electromagnetic induction if a conductor experiences a change in magnetic field it induces a voltage across the ends of the conductor and if it's a closed circuit a current will flow so as we move this um, coil around we get a varying amount because when the coil is moving in line with the field when it's there and it's going in that direction we're not cutting across the line, so therefore we're not generating anything. But when we're in this position here, this one, we're generating the most voltage because we're cutting across the, the, the field at right angles. So if we look at the next slide, as we turn that coil from there to there to there to there and so on, this point is where we generate the most voltage this this point this one and that one are where the least are and as the coil comes round to the opposite poles we generate a negative half cycle so over one complete rotation of the loop we end up with a complete sinusoidal waveform with a positive peak, a negative peak, and that crosses zero. So the natural rotation of a generator causes us to generate a sinusoidal waveform. Okay. We can have a DC generator, but that the, the reason we main reason we generate AC waveform as our main means of generating mass scale electricity is so that it can easily transmit it across a wide area using transformers to up the voltage and then to back down again for local needs okay so IC is the main form of generation um, across the world really yeah, for, for large scale use of electricity so that's how, that's how we get the sinusoidal waveform but then we need to know as um, some details about it. First of all, what it does, any sinusoidal or any AC waveform, AC stands for alternating current. And that's because if we connect this 
AC waveform to a circuit. So there's our AC waveform. <coughs> to a circuit like that. In the positive half cycle of that AC waveform we'll send current in that direction. In the negative half cycle blue the current will go in the opposite direction. So we've got an oscillating current where it where it changes over there's no current so we're getting a current that is also sinusoidal in nature so we can describe the current as sinusoidal as well okay so effectively I could put my current on this diagram it might not have the same height of peak but it would be sinusoidal with a per resistance as the load like that so the current is also sinusoidal. Okay. This waveform gives us a direct current. Why? You've got no negative. No negative half cycle. It's not going below zero. DC doesn't have to be a straight line. DC means it's direct current, the current is always travelling in the same direction. Doesn't mean it's not going up and down. Okay, this is DC. That one is AC, because it crosses zero. This is AC. That's AC. And so is that AC. Yep. Yeah. Causes an alternating current. AC voltage causes alternating current to flow. Yeah. Everyone happy with that so far? Right. Now what we've got are some facts about the AC waveform, some terms if you like. First of all, the period of a sine wave or sinusoidal waveform. And this could be a period of a square wave as well, or a triangular wave. Any alternating current waveform will have a period. It's the time in seconds that it takes to do one complete cycle. So to rotate the coil through 360 degrees there, or to rotate the coil through 2 pi radians. There's 2 pi radians in one rotation of 360 degrees. So we can at some points look at our angles in degrees, but usually with the um, sine wave equation we're talking about our angles being in radians. Related to the period is the frequency of the waveform. Frequency is measured in hertz. And we get the frequency by dividing the period in seconds into one. So the frequency is one over the period. Consequently, if we know the frequency, the period is one over f. So they're reciprocals of each other. Because the old term for frequency was cycles per second. That's what hertz is. How many times do you rotate every second? Our AC mains in this country is 50 hertz. Has a period of 20 milliseconds. All right. any, any questions on that fact? Uh, uh, anything so far? No. Right, peak and peak to peak values. So, terms for this, we might use V maximum or V peak for there, and we've got a negative peak as well down the bottom. So, this, this voltage here is the peak value of that waveform. 
in this case 100 volts. You may also see with some voltages, I'll talk about a peak to peak value. That's the distance between the two peaks. It's not really something, it's definitely not something you can measure on a multimeter because this waveform can never be at that point and that point at the same time. You can measure it on an oscilloscope because you actually draw, oscilloscope draws the picture of the whole waveform. In fact, you don't even measure the peak value on a multimeter. We're coming on to what you measure on a multimeter in a minute. Okay? But the peak to peak value, I would measure peak to peak on an oscilloscope and then divide it by two to get the peak value because it's easier to read the peak to peak value on an oscilloscope. Also, some, some specifications for things like amplifiers will, will quote the signal to noise ratio or, or the noise in a peak to peak value. If you've got some noise sitting on top of the signal, they'll, they'll quote that as peak to peak sometimes. So you'll see that in textbooks, you'll see peak to peak used in some specifications. Okay? But generally, that's not something that you could measure with a meter. Next fact about sine waves, and this is probably the, the most important one to get, is what's called the root mean square value of a sinusoid. And you can have a, a, all, all the different wave shapes, like triangle, sawtooth, will also have an RMS value, but you won't calculate it in the same way as you do for a sinusoid. So the RMS value is like a DC equivalent. It's the AC value of that waveform that will deliver the, or will dissipate the same power in the same load as an equivalent DC. So this, hun this 100 volt um, AC waveform, if we connected that to a 10 ohm resistor, that would deliver the same power from that resistor as a 70.7 volt DC. Voltage would. So it's like a, a DC equivalent of an AC waveform. It's also the, what's quoted as the nominal voltage. So our AC mains from that socket over there is 230 volts. That's the RMS value of it. If we go down this page a bit, peak value of, of, of UK AC mains. 230 volts divided by 0 0.707 so this mains we use peaks at 325 volts the 400 volt because um, we, we use dual voltage in this country the 400 volts peaks at 566 volts sorry where did, where did the 707 come from? the, the 7, you calculate the RMS value um, Paul by multiplying the peak by 0 0.707. In fact, the exact value of that is 1 over root 2. Okay? So, so it's 0 0.707, wave. a standard for a, for a sine wave. If you're talking about a different wave shape, then the calculation would be different. 0 0.707 is standard. Yeah, for, for a sine, sine wave. Yeah? Yeah. So inexpensive multimeters so your sort of 70, 80 quid, 100 quid jobs they will measure the correct RMS value as though your waveform is a perfect sine wave if you want RMS value for any wave shape you need to buy a more expensive 5, 6, 700 pound true RMS meter and then that will measure the RMS value of any waveform so it's just a little bit of a fact about that information and its meaning. You'd only spend that extra money if you're working with funny wave shapes all the time and you needed to know what the RMS values were. Okay. And you can, you can always use an oscilloscope to measure the complete waveform, find the peak value, um, and get it from there. Okay. So that's, what, that's RMS. That's what it is, and the RMS is the quoted nominal value of an AC um, supply.
And lastly, a little bit more detail on this angular frequency. Omega. That is not W. It is the Greek letter Omega. Okay. Angular frequency is sine wave. It's the number of radians turned in one second. So it's the angular velocity. Omega is always equal to 2 pi, because there's 2 pi radians in one complete rotation. We then take that 2 pi radians and multiply it by the frequency. We get the angular frequency of that waveform. So when you, when you see omega, it is simply equal to 2 pi times f. So our AC mains is 50 hertz. So the angular frequency of our AC waveform is 100 pi. One little tip when you start to have pi in calculations like this is when you're doing all your manipulation and rearranging your formulas and, 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 and values in between, leave it as 100 pi. Only evaluate pi on your calculator when you want final answer at the end. Because quite often, You'll, let, you'll do some kind of rearranging and the pi will cancel out anyway. And whenever you evaluate pi, what happens on your calculator? You fill it up with decimals. Yeah? So just leave, for instance, the 50 hertz waveform, leave the angular frequency as 100 pi unless you have to evaluate it to get an exact value. Okay? And I'll, I'll show you what I mean when we do some examples anyway. So, instantaneous values, anywhere along that waveform, you might be interested in an instantaneous value, and I've marked four off in blue there, of that waveform at an instant in time. Instantaneous values, whether they're voltages, currents, or any other value, in science, are designated by a lowercase letter. So an instantaneous voltage, we write V with a bracket T after it. What we mean is V at time T in seconds. Okay. And any instantaneous value of a sine wave where V is equal to zero at time is equal to zero. So where we've got a point like that, and where there, or where there is no phase shift, okay, we're coming on to that in a minute, we can calculate V at time T with the formula VP, V at time T is equal to capital VP, what that means is the peak voltage times the sine of omega T. So that formula will give us the value of voltage at any point in that waveform in time t seconds. And if you look at it, when t is zero, what is, if t is, um, time is zero, that makes the omega times t bit zero, what's the sign of nothing? No, you don't know what the sine of zero is? Zero. Zero. Sine of zero, zero, so all of that becomes zero, so that's VP times zero. At time zero, the voltage is zero. Okay? The sine of 90 degrees, or the sine of pi over two, is one. So that's where it hits the peak. And then all the other values in between, the sine of the angle is slightly less than one. Okay, and then in this half cycle, the signs of the angles become negative. So we end up with a negative instantaneous voltage through through this period, the second and a half. Of the okay? Now, because we um, can, what we can end up with is voltages in circuits. When we start to include um, inductive components and capacitive components in our circuit, 
it can end up with voltages and currents that are out of phase with each other. So we end up with a phase shift between one waveform and another. We'll usually say that one waveform, if we look at this diagram, this one, we'll usually fix one of them so that it crosses at time t equals zero like that, and then we describe how the other waveform is relative to it. So in that one, the green Y1 waveform crosses at the zero point, the red one crosses zero before the green one. So Y2 is actually ahead. When we talk about the angles going round a circle for these waveforms, we talk about it being anti-clockwise. So this one is ahead of Y1. We say that Y2 leads Y1 by that angle. And that's the angle we're talking about in there, that phase angle. On this um, diagram, Y3 crosses at zero. Y4 crosses after it at this phase angle there. So we say in that one that Y4 is lagging Y3 by the given phase angle. So we end up with, we can have leading and lagging phase angles or positive and negative um, thetas. So that we can describe the phase shift for a waveform if there is a phase angle, what we have to do with our equation. So this is the full equation of a sine wave including phase angle is it's what we had before V uh, little v open brackets t, v at time t is the peak voltage times the sine of and then we have to open some brackets and we have omega t plus or minus the phase angle associated with that waveform. Just extend the page and write that out a little bigger. Little v at time t is equal to vp times the sine of omega t plus or minus the phase angle between of associated with that waveform. And then under that I'll write instantaneous value peak value angular velocity put a note there that that's 2 pi times f time in seconds phase shift radians <coughs> or degrees could be in degrees but mm -hmm. normally if you're talking about time if you're trying to get the um, the, the instantaneous value at a time you'd be talking about radians if, you, if this is degrees, then you really need a value here in degrees, and that's not what you normally get from this type of question. So you're going to be working in radians here. So that is the general form, complete general form of a sine wave. If you're talking about a sine wave that crosses at time t equals zero, you can take that this um, plus or minus theta away and just leave that bit as omega t. And you'll usually, your question will usually have one of its, one of its values fixed at that and then indicate what all the others are relative to it. Okay. As you're going to see next week, um, inductive components cause a phase shift in one direction 
capacitive components cause a phase shift in the other direction and they tend to try and cancel each other out. Okay. Right, so let's have a look at um, an example um, question. We've got um, a volt uh, V at time T. <coughs> got a, an equation in the for full form with a phase shift. V at time T, 335 sine 450 pi T plus pi over 6 volts. So, question A, determine the peak value. How do we get the peak value from there? Sorry? It's 335 volts, yeah. This equation, move this down a touch. This equation is in the standard form, isn't it? V at T equals V peak. Yeah? So it is simply 335 volts. from equation. That, that is you having the knowledge to know that that is a voltage sine wave in standard form and this value in front of sine here is the peak voltage. That would be a real easy mark in the exam, that would, wouldn't it? Okay? periodic time and the frequency. You know, I've kind of got them the wrong way round really. Where can I get the fre how can I get the frequency from that? What is four hundred and fifty pi? Not quite. Over two pi. This is times the sine of what's the next bit? Omega T. Omega T. So four fifty pi is equal to or what's equal to four hundred and fifty pi? Two Yeah, omega is equal omega equals 2 pi f, yeah, so therefore f is omega over 2 pi, and that equals omega in this particular case is 450 pi, over 2 pi. Remember what I said? Sometimes, quite often, the pi's cancel each other out. 450 over 2 is 225 hertz. Now we can do B quite easily. Period is equal to, how do I calculate the period? 1 over F. 1 over F. 1 over 225 equals, push buttons please. Four point uh, four. 
times 10 to the minus 3 seconds equals 4.4 .4 milliseconds. Something I haven't specifically ch shown you how to do is how to calculate the phase angle in degrees. We've been given the phase angle in radians. So this is theta on the end there. It's in radians, pi over 6 radians. So how do we get a phase angle in degrees? D. do a conversion. How many radians are there in 360 degrees? Two. Two, two pi radians in 360 degrees. So one complete cycle is 360 degrees. So what we have to do is say we're moving pi over six radians out of 2 pi radians, that's the fraction of a full circle we're moving and then if we multiply that by the full circle in degrees we'll get our angle in degrees because that's worth 360, that's how far we're turning therefore if we multiply that fraction by the complete revolution we end up with our angle in degrees I think you should find that comes out at 30 Yeah. Mm. Okay. All happy with that? Yeah. value vt when t equals zero. So we know that vt is equal to 335 sine 450 pi t plus pi over 6. Yep. If we're Evaluating that when t is equal to zero, what we've got is 355 times the sine of, if t is zero, all of that bit is zero, so we've got the sine of pi over 6. Do you all see that? Yeah? Push the buttons, please. Sine at 355 times the sine of pi over 6 radians. Three hundred and fifty five times the sine of pi over six. Three thirty five. Is that three thirty five, sorry? What did it come out at? 167.5 
volts. <coughs> yeah? So the value of this voltage, when it crosses T is equal to zero, is not zero like we would normally expect, or something like 167 volts, where it crosses zero. So start and last, got phase shift involved with it. Okay, 30 degrees. So, F is, I see, F, Vt is equal to 3.5 milliseconds. So, we just put the numbers in again. 335 times the sine of 450 pi times... 3.5 times 10 to the minus 3 to 3.5 milliseconds plus pi over 6 radius. Looking at your periodic time what is, the, what is the main thing you'd expect out of the result of this? Our period is 4.4 milliseconds. And we're looking at 3.5. Negative. That will be negative, yeah. You would think. Although, with the phase shift, that might not be the case. If the phase shift is big enough, we're probably going to be looking somewhere around around the, lo the value where it crosses um, again. So what have you got? Minus 240. Minus, that is negative, okay. Minus 200 and how many? 43. Yeah, you've got it. 355 times the sign of... Four fifteen times three point. You've not put the pi in. Have I missed it? You've not put the pi in. That's the first thing that's missing anyway. Okay. So at time three point five milliseconds, which is still within the first complete waveform, we're to have a voltage of minus 243 volts and the next G we want to find T when VT is equal to 100 volts so that involves us rearranging the formula. So let's write out the general. We need to get T out of that. What's the first thing we're going to do? They aren't brackets in this term, are they? That's a no, function. It's fine, yeah. Right, it's a sine function. Yeah. The first thing you're going to do is take VP across. So you're going to divide by the peak voltage. So what we get is little VT over V peak is equal to the sine of omega T plus the phase angle. Next bit of rearranging. How do we get rid of the sine function? Sine of the minus one of both sides. So we do sine of the minus one of both sides. So we have 
sine to the minus 1. If you're unsure, look at your calculator. It's the inverse function on your sine button. Vt over Vp is equal to omega t plus the phase angle. Next, take away the angle. Sign the minus one, little VT over VP minus the phase shift is equal to omega T. And that one is subtract. The angle. Lastly, divide by omega. So I'm going to change it round and put what we want to find on this side, and that's equal to the sine of sine to the minus one of little vt over v, vp minus phase angle all divided by <coughs> now we've rearranged it we can put some numbers in t is equal to sine to the minus one of a hundred over three hundred and thirty five minus pi over 6 all divided by and omega was 450 pi, wasn't it? Yeah. Equals. One instant we might be interested in is where are the peaks or where are the zero crossing points that we most likely yes. will be interested in. We got that map. I got a minus 0.16 millisecond. Can't be negative. Have we gone wrong somewhere then? Just look at this rearranging because it can't be negative. Shouldn't be. I've got zero point zero one positive. Yep. Let's have a look what we've got. That must have been a mistake. I must have made a mistake somewhere. No, not necessarily, because that should, should be positive. Shouldn't you, when you rearrange it, should you take the omega across first, and then it will be sine minus 1 v2. How can, you, how can you take the omega across well, first? The omega went underneath. Well, I, 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 thought, I thought everything would be, every, it would be sine, oh, sine minus 1 v2 vp over omega minus the angle. What take a what omega minus the angle underneath all of that? No, no, no. You have sine minus one, the sine minus one bit over the angle over omega, yeah, minus the angle up. First and take one. After that whole bit. Different parts. Do you want me to copy this? Just have a look here. Yeah, sine. Yeah, you can do. Wait, just wait a minute. Sign the minus one, hundred over three hundred and fifty five, minus pi over six, all over four hundred and fifty pi. What you have put in, Paul, is right, and you've got a positive value for you. Well, there we go. After eleven seconds. There's something here every day. There'd be eight already. Just explain to me again, Dave was it you, David? So are you agreeing? Let's get this right. Are you agreeing with that bit? Yeah. Yeah? To end up with that. Yeah. Yeah? yeah? Are you agreeing with sine of the minus one to end up with that? Yeah. 
Then you'll say and do what? I'll then, I'll then divide by everything. But you can't do that because you've got... Because you've got the... If, if that was omega times all of that, then you could do that in one go. But this bit's not multiplied by omega. So if you... Let, let's just take that out of there. Put it in degrees. Clear this up, because that's important. Paste, right? If you say you're going to divide both sides now, by omega, what you're effectively doing is you're doing that to that side, yeah? To this side, you're doing that. Yeah, so those two cancel out, and you end up with T plus theta over omega. You haven't, because you, you, you're just divided all of that by omega. Do you get that now? So you've got to get rid of the plus, the angle first, by taking it away from both sides. If you had that, what you're doing is you, what you would do if you had that. Yeah. Then you divide by omega first, and then that would get rid of the brackets, wouldn't it? Yeah. yeah. Okay? So you should get the right answer from what we put down the bottom of the page there. That's around 11. Yeah, Paul, your calculator must be in degrees. Really if you put it in degrees, then you get an angle of Well, spot. Yeah, if it's in radians, you get. This angle's in radians. Yeah, but you get negative. One. Yeah. Yeah, the same thing. Is your calculator in degrees? It was Paul? in degrees, yeah. That's what you get. And you now get minus 1.68. <laughs> Four hundred and fifty five Let's discuss every breakfast. <laughs> 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 You got you got an angle in radians. You got an angular frequency in radians. How can that come out? That eleven I had was because it was in degrees, but I then just changed it, put into radians. Hmm. But your calculator is in radians now. Yeah, what's in degrees? So. Right. Gone wrong some something's wrong somewhere then. You got a point there. Well delete delete that. Oh yeah. <laughs> All clear. Shift. Set up. Radio. Shift sign. Fraction. One hundred. Over. Three three five. Close the brackets. Minus fraction. Six. All over. Four fifty times.
Minus 1.559 times Darren, right guys, during a half hour break, I'm going to have to take a look at this. I can't work out why it's not coming out right. We will, we will sort it. Gone wrong somewhere. Okay. We'll take a break there, and then um, in your second half, we'll have a go at some questions in the notes.